Good evening, crafters. Hello. I always say that, and then I always regret saying it afterwards when I watch myself back. Oh, good evening. Hi, Sylvia. It's good to know someone's watching. Good evening, crafters. It's Izzy Shashinsky here, Izzy's Crafty Bees, Independent Stamping Up Demonstrator, coming to you live this Tuesday evening. Oh, hi, Lorna. I will just say hi as people jump on. Um, so this evening I'm going to share with you some fantastic new products that are coming um, to you customers next week um, early before the actual annual catalogue goes live in May. So you're, ha you're able to actually get your hands on brand new products that will be available in the annual catalogue and they'll be coming to you next week. And I'm going to talk to you about them, I'm going to demonstrate them. I'm really excited to share some projects with you. And I've actually just realised that I've left two projects in the living room, um, but not to worry. I've already posted photographs of them, so you'll be able to see the photographs. So before we start, I'm going to, as always, just start the evening by saying welcome to everybody who's watching live. And if you're not watching live, you're watching on playback later on, then hello and welcome again. And thank you for joining me on Catch Up. And you can also catch up with me on my YouTube channel because I'll be posting this video straight there. So if you are watching me on YouTube, um, if you wouldn't mind giving me the thumbs up if you enjoy this demonstration and maybe leaving a comment underneath and if you really enjoy the demonstration if you wouldn't mind clicking the subscribe button I'd be really appreciating that too. So I will also just start now by as always welcoming you all and saying um, a few things about what's made me happy this week since I last spoke to you last Tuesday. So things that have made me happy this week um, well, the first thing as I got some happy mail today, so I got a lovely card from my mum. Thank you, mum. And I've already said thank you because I was just speaking to her. So I'm going to pop my card from mum with my other happy mail up here where I display it in my craft room. And what else has made me happy this week? Well, yesterday, um, I don't often talk politics or talk about the situation that we've been living through for the last year, but yesterday's news did make me happy, if a little bit um, trep trepidation, a little bit of trepidation. So I'm really obviously looking forward to um, things relaxing a bit and life returning to somewhat near normality. I'm still waiting for a call up for my vaccination and as soon as I've had my vaccination I will be feeling a lot happier but yesterday's news was much more positive I'm sure everybody will agree um, and yes just other things that have made me happy the butterflies we've had some lovely um, there's been some lovely projects shared right across social media and I've been watching some of my other fellow demonstrators do their live demonstrations. I've been really enjoying that. I've really enjoyed taking some time out for me to actually watch others crafting it has been lovely. Um, so, yeah, and we've also had some lovely sunrises this week. Um, I get to see the sunrise at the front of our house. So this week when I've been having breakfast, it's been lovely. I had some really gorgeous sunrises. Um, so yeah, what's made you happy this week? You can comment. I've got live comments on um, throughout this demonstration. So please add your comments as we're talking. Now, the first project I want to share with you, I'm going to share before I spin my camera around and angle it down onto my desk. This is a project that I finished this afternoon. Well, I started and finished this afternoon. And if you saw my other butterfly projects, you'll know that I absolutely love nature. I love butterflies in particular and birds and um, flowers and plants and nature and taking photographs of nature and I also like to collect things and I've got all sorts of interesting collections shall we say when I'm out walking I collect treasure put it in my pocket I do pressed flowers um, and I just collect things and then I make displays of them and um, I have got one or two real butterflies in cases but not um, many. I've got some silk butterflies in a, a, a illuminated dome in my hallway and I had some domes left over from a Christmas project so this afternoon 
I'm hoping that the camera can pick this up without too much reflection, which it isn't doing. So this afternoon I made this small butterfly dome from one that I had left over from Christmas. And I'm not sure whether that's actually focusing or not. It's probably struggling. And it's also got an illumination underneath. If I can find the button. Yay! So it's got a little light in the middle. So I'm going to pop the dome back on and I will just pop it down on my desk surface. Oh, I've got some hearts. Yay! <laughs> I really enjoyed making that and I enjoyed making the framed butterflies because I absolutely love doing the... Um, I'm looking for my book now that I used and I've tidied that away. Um, I love making the really natural looking butterflies. I also really like the pretty um, bright coloured butterflies which I'm going to show you this evening as well. So let's get on. I'm going to pop my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to switch my screen to rear camera and I'm going to just get you facing the desk. So bear with me. Well, we have a bit of unplug my power cord because I think my battery should last now. So let's get you face. I think as I move the camera, my connection just dropped out, but I think we should be okay so long as I stop jiggling around now. I think we're good to go. I think we're okay. Can someone just give me um, a quick comment if I'm still connected? And I will just hang around for a sec. Just make sure I'm still live. It does still say that I'm live at the top of the screen here. OK, I've realised that I've not got my sheet with my host code um, printed and I had the wrong host code printed last session. So that's really rubbish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly, while you're watching, I'm going to actually just write it out for you. So if this marker pen works, let's have a look. My current host code is K3. Six U Q G D G. So K for kilo, numbers three six, U for unicorn or uniform even. Oh thank you, Fanny Stafford, for telling me I'm still live. Um U for uniform, Q for Quebec, G for golf, D for Delta, G for golf. So if you're placing an order online um before um, I'm going to say before Friday, please use this host code. If your order is over £25, I will send you a free gift next month. And that I will post a new host code as soon as I've closed this one off, which will either be Friday, Saturday or Sunday. Um, just a note to say, celebration ends Sunday. So, if you want freebies... Get your orders in. Orders over £45, you'll qualify for a celebration freebie. Okie dokie, let's get on. And I'm going to show you this card this evening. And the reason I wanted to show you this card this evening is because I posted this card online on various groups. And I had a lot of love shown for this card. Lots and lots of positive beautiful comments about this card and this was using a particular technique with those gold flakes those wonderful gold flakes so i'm going to use the same technique but i'm going to show you this card this evening and i'm going to go in a different colorway so i'm going to go um with a pink colorway so i'm going to go with her fabulous magenta madness okay so before I start that, I want to actually share with you the new items that are coming next week. If you've managed to not see these on other demonstrators' um, social media platforms, I don't know where you've been because this is obviously all over social media at the moment. But next week, and let me tell you how this is working. I'm just going to put those in that order so I don't get reflection. Um, let me tell you how this works. So this stamp set and this die set will be appearing in the next brand new annual catalogue, which doesn't launch until the beginning of May. But next Tuesday, you will be able to get these early. So you'll be able to order these items, the stamp and the um, dies as a bundle next Tuesday. I think that's March the 3rd. And 
um where is it march the second anyway it's next tuesday the first tuesday in march and also they will be in the new catalogue so they're going to be here for a whole year but you can get them early but also from next week you'll be able to order this designer series paper pack and this amazing paper which is like a wood grain and it's actually called natural touch speciality paper and i'm just going to leave that in the packet but i'm going to share with you a small piece of it up close so you can see if i hold it in the camera and just shine it in the light it's actually got a wood grain slightly embossed wood grain texture to it and it's slightly shiny I'm going to use it on the card we're going to make so I'll be able to show you um, a technique that I'm going to use on it but you can also colour it using Stampin' Blends alcohol markers so you can actually colour over it in the alcohol markers and make it different colours so you can darken the wood grain it's almost like giving it a french polish and stain which is quite fun so this paper you get two sheets in a pack and it's 12 inch by 12 inch or 30 point something centimeters by 30 whatever centimeters two just two sheets in the pack and it's um speciality paper and this pack of designer series paper they're only available while stocks last and from next tuesday until the annual catalogue goes live they're not going to be available in the annual catalogue so these are a limited um, item the papers okay I will flick through the papers but I'm just going to run through the prices for you before we start um, so the bundle the the stamp and the dies and I'm going to get them out of the pack and show you them in a bit more detail before we actually start Oh, Fanny state saying that the picture's a bit blurry. If anyone else can comment whether the picture is good quality or not. I did clean my lenses, so I'm wondering if it's my internet connection. Anyway, let's carry on. I'm going to get the dies out of the pack and show you them in detail, but let me just run through the prices. So the stamp set on its own is £16. The dies are £41 and as a bundle you save 10% so it will be £51.25 and the DSP pack is £10.75 and the wood grain, pack of wood grain is £4.75. Yeah, so Alison's saying I'm a bit pixely as well, I wonder why that is. I'm wondering if it's an internet connection issue hmm I don't know what to do about that I might just I might just leave you there for about 30 seconds just looking at these beautiful things and I'm just going to nip next door and I'm going to ask husband if he'll just come offline just while I do my live so just stay there don't go anywhere have a sip of coffee have a look at these beautiful things be right back coming back are you still here how wonderful my audience is still here thank you so much I've just asked husband if he'll stay offline there isn't a reason why it should be um, the internet because we've boosted it but the, it could could well be so I'll keep talking if anyone wants to comment whether things have improved or not as I go along so I'm just going to show you the stamp the stamp comes in red rubber and it's actually one big stamp so it's one big um, cling stamp there we go one big cling mount stamp and it it stamps um, all of the images that are actually um, separate butterflies so there's the, the the butterfly images are not joined together in any way but the stamp is just one big stamp so it's really easy to actually ink up and then stamp all of those six beautiful butterflies in one go and it's perfect for using with your stamp positioning tool um your stamperator so your stamp positioning tool or 
it's really easy to stamp if you've got the large block the really large block now let's move on to these dies these are fantastic so in the die set this is going to amaze you you get just pop that I've mounted all mine on magnetic sheet. You get this one big die that's all connected together and you've guessed it, that cuts out all of the butterflies all at once. Now that picture's shown slightly smaller than the actual thing. In fact, if I turn it over, that's why I put it back in. So it actually cuts out all of the butterflies all at once. So what I mean by that, and I've used three, here's three that I stamped earlier from the six. And I've already used three in my butterfly dome. And here are the other three left from that set of six. So that was one run through the die cutting machine. And you get six perfect, beautiful butterflies stamped, ready for you to colour in. Another fantastic, amazing thing about this die is, you've guessed it, see this sheet of designer series paper this die cuts all six of those main full butterfly images all at once. So you can run that through your die cutting machine and you get six already beautifully coloured, perfect butterflies. And that's what we're going to do this evening because I'm going to cut those out and I'm going to use the pink one. So that's one of the dies in the die set. The other dies you get are these beautifully detailed butterflies that you can actually use like a lacy overlay so they also match in size to the butterflies in the de designer series paper and they match in size the butterflies in the stamp set so you can use them on their own or you can use them as an overlay to a stamped image or a die cut um, colored image from the designer series paper they're so beautiful and as if that wasn't enough we get these extra, so we get these two tiddly ones, which is cute, little tiddly solid butterflies. And we also get these wonderful textured dies that we're going to use this one this evening. This one actually cuts out a kind of, I want to just say pierced basket weave effect to give texture to a background. This one cuts out like, I want to say aero bubbles, so it's like little just little holes again fabulous for background texture so something a bit different to using an embossing folder this one actually cuts out a brick design and it actually cuts holes so I'm going to leave that on the magnetic sheet but I'm going to be using that this evening to create this background and I will show you how so let's pop all of those dies back in to the packet along with the stamp set over to one side. I'm not actually going to be stamping this evening, stamping the butterflies. I'm going to be cutting these butterflies from this piece of designer series paper. But before I get on with that, let me just quickly go through the designs in the pack. And you can see how just how much, just how much you get in the pack. You get lots. So you get this design like lovely clouds in the background and little whimsy butterflies and of course there's a beautiful design on the reverse of that a nice patterned um, turquoise colour I'm just going to use a turquoise phrase there so let's have a look that's all of that we get these little butterflies a smaller version of this and on the reverse of that we get a pink cloudy background got this design and on the reverse of that we've got a lovely coral colour that's that one let's pop that there and we've got this gorgeous rainbow effect butterflies and on the reverse of that another cloudy effect great for backgrounds and some small butterflies in blue and turquoise and on the other side almost like a camo background and the reverse side of this one we've seen those pastel clouds so some gorgeous designs plenty of paper to be playing with only available while stocks last once they go on sale next tuesday let me pop those all to one side 
OK, and let's have a look at this technique that I want to show you. So let's start by cutting our card base. Let's actually do some crafting. So I'm going to get my trimmer. I'm going to make a regular size card base using um, Magenta Madness. I had to think about what colour it was then. Now this piece of um, cardstock, I've already chopped a piece off, so I'm just going to remind myself which way is which. So... Yeah, so this this would be my width of A4, so that's 21 centimetres, and this would have been my length at 30 centimetres. I've already cut some off, so I need to actually make my card base 15 centimetres. I'll just get rid of that waste, and then I need to turn it and score it at 10 and a half. So we've got our regular size card base. And I should have said, as always, in every in every pack of DSP on the back, it will tell you exactly which colours, which stamping up colours are actually printed in the designer series paper. So that's why I know that Magenta Madness is a pink that's actually in um, in the designer series paper. Now I want my second layer to go onto my card I want to make that 14 I've already got it to the right width but I want to make it 14 centimeters long so I'm going to trim a little bit off there and so now I've got my my base like my next second layer and we're going to do quite a bit of work to this layer and that's where the technique's going to come in I'll just put my trimmer back down and I'm going to take a seat I'm actually going to get some ink before I sit down. I'm going to get um, Magenta Madness and I think that that is it. Yes, that's it. So what I'm going to show you is, excuse my squeaky chair. I've tried to cure it, but it's not worked. Um, I'm going to just bring in this die again and just show you that I've made myself a stencil using a piece of scrap card and I've used this die to cut um, the, the shape. I think I cut it twice, then I turned it, then I turned it back and cut it again. So I actually cut this four times just in a staggered effect on a piece of scrap card and that's allowed me to make myself a stencil and I'm going to use that stencil to um, do the gold leafing effect for the background but before I do that I actually want to just grab myself a piece of um I'm just looking for it now just a piece of scrap card that I can work on just a base instead of a grid sheet because sometimes the grid sheet does make my camera go a bit pixely so I'm just going to use a piece of this backing card and I'm going to take my piece of wood speciality paper and I'm going to use a um, sanding block. I can find it. Oh, there it is. I'm really sorry about that. It just jumped out of its box. So I'm going to use um, a piece of sandpaper. Now, we used to sell sanding blocks and sandpaper. And we haven't done for quite a while. So any, any um, medium-grade sandpaper on a sanding block, one of those velcro sanding blocks that you might use for DIY will, will suffice. And I'm just going to use a very straightforward, oh, didn't want to wrinkle it. And I'm just trying to just distress that. When I first looked at this placed down, I quite like a vintagey look and it just felt too neat to start with. So I'm going to just distress it slightly by sanding it and I just think it looks a little bit nicer, a little bit more vintage. Now to remove all of that dust that I've just created, I'm going to use a sticky cloth. I don't even know what these are called, but you can buy them from craft shops. I reckon if Alison's watching, she might know. Um, it's just a cloth that's sticky. I don't even know what's on it, but it's really good for removing dust, sanded dust. 
and bits off your desk so it just lives in a little plastic bag it's something i've had for years so i don't even know um what else could you use you could possibly use a lint roller it might be a bit too sticky but that's kind of just tacky it's like a tacky cloth and that just removes that that dusted sanded bit but now i'm hoping you can see apart from my wrinkle where i've creased it but i'm not too bothered about that um put that to that top side um you can see that i've just distressed those corners now you could go round and daub some ink around that because i've roughed up that shiny surface i think that this speciality paper will now actually take on ink i'm going to just test it with this bit that this strip that i cut off going to rough this up and let's just see what it's like if we daub the edge or even um put some ink i mean i'm just i've got magenta madness here so i might as well have a look and i've got one of my blending brushes so let's see what happens yeah so now that's taking on ink whereas previously it was too shiny to actually take on ink so i will just let me just experiment this this is a completely live experiment i've not tried this before a piece of kitchen roll and see how much rubs off because my guess is that some will rub off and some will actually some ink will adhere where i've roughed it up and exposed the paper core underneath so i'm thinking now if i wanted to vin make this look even more vintage i could use a a wood shade of ink something like soft suede or something and just daub the edges or even crumb cake and that would make that look even more vintage that was a bit of an experiment thank you for sticking with me with that so we don't need that ink just yet what we're going to do first because i'm going to show you another technique for using those gilded leafing flakes i will get the name of those correct one day let me just look at them what are they called <sighs> gilded leafing flakes i did get it right there you go so here's another technique and remember for the gilded leafing um, flakes all you need is something tacky so the recommended sticky glue is our heat and stick powder for which you need a heat um, a hot gun heat tool now i'm just going to use a sponge my trusty pot with my glue sponges in and i'm going to use a silicon mat or something similar a non-stick mat I, you can see i've had glue on here from yesterday and it just rubs off when you're finished and i'm going to use some multi-purpose liquid glue and i'm going to put a big splodge of it on my mat very nice technique to use i'm using a sponge that i've already had glue on previously so this is a sponge that i keep for that purpose and I'm going to hold my stencil quite firmly, but I'm going to use a dabbing motion. I'm not going to rub it. I'm going to use a dabbing motion and just dab some of that Tombow multi-purpose liquid glue through that stencil onto that speciality paper. And I'm going to get rid of the sponge into the pot and the little glue mat out of harm's way. I'm now going to remove the stencil and pop that to one side so it can dry and it can be used again and again. And I'm going to pop this to one side. Now I can see if I just tilt it into the light, maybe you can. I can see where the glue has landed. I'm going to pop that to one side because I actually want it to dry tacky. I'm going to pop that to one side while I die cut my butterfly. So let's just move that right out of harm's way. I'm just going to leave it over there. And I'm going to get my big single die. And I'm going to bring in my stamping cut and emboss machine. Large one because this die needs to fit through that gap there. And I'm going to get my piece of beautiful designer series paper. Oh, thank you, Alison. Glitter clean up cloth. Marvellous. I'm hoping that's the text. So if anyone wants one of those tacky cloths, that's the kind of thing that you might need to ask your search engine. Preferred search engine. 
and I'm sure you will find one. They are ever so handy if you do have glitter sprinkled everywhere. And I actually learned they're very handy with the gilded leafing flakes as well, which you're going to see in a little while. Now I'm just going to take a few moments to make sure this is really lined up well. And another thing that I absolutely adore about this die is, look here, I'm just going to point to that. It actually cuts the feelers. How many times have we had a butterfly punch or a butterfly die that misses the feelers and then we have to stamp it again or draw them on now i'm just using a bit of old washi tape it's a low tack tape and i've just got a couple of pieces that i leave stuck on my machine and that's just going to secure that die onto the designer series paper while i pop my top plate on and i can just wind that through my die cutting machine And there it comes out the other side. I'll just pop my machine back to one side. So that's all the... Oh, no, it's not all the die cutting. I'm going to do a little tiny bit more die cutting this evening. So now we can lift that off. And you can see that die has cut six beautiful butterflies. I'm just going to pop my bit, bit of old washi tape back on my machine. Because it can be used, this bit of um, washi tape can be used so many times. And actually, if it's low tack, oh, I've just realised I popped that on the wrong place. There we go. Okay. Let me just pop that there. So we've now got six gorgeous multicoloured butterflies to make projects with. How gorgeous are they? I'm going to choose to use this pink one. It's ever so slightly smaller than that blue one. Oh, that, that, um, just jade, actually, that colour. But I'm going to use that one there. And pop those to one side for another project. Oh, that's a really good point too, Alison, as well. Yeah, absolutely. You can use it up and use it in mixed media as well. No waste. Yes. Love a bit of mixed media. Okay, so the other components, while my glue is just drying still to a tacky point, the other components to this card are this sentiment here. So I'm just going to grab a piece of, gosh, I've got a very squeaky chair, a piece of, a scrap of white cardstock, and I'm going to use my other favourite dies that have just jumped out of the box and hidden themselves. Stitched so sweetly, guys. My absolute favourites because look at all the different ones you get. They're so versatile, so lovely to use. And I'm going to use this one. No, I'm not. I'm going to use this, this little one. The smallest of the rectangles. And the stamp I'm going to use, the sentiment, is from this stamp set, Borders Abound. And that's a red rubber stamp set. So I'm going to actually stamp my sentiment before I die cut because it's a red rubber and it's difficult to line up um, onto a pre-cut rectangle. So I'm going to take my Magenta Madness ink, tap, 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 and I'm going to actually just stamp it onto my white cardstock. And now, I can be certain to position my die exactly where I want it and run that through the machine. This time, let's bring in baby machine. Woo, she said, dropping all the plates together. Let's bring in the baby machine. Oh, that sounded a bit like a baby machine. <laughs> oh, you know what I mean when I say that. Oh, that's so funny. So now I can line up my die perfectly. And hopefully it's not going to move. And I put my top plate on. moment I'm going ever so warm I'm going to show you another technique now so I'm going to take that out of the die 
and just put my scrap to one side. And before I actually take the um, sentiment away altogether, I'm going to just pop the sentiment back in the die. I'm going to bring in my um, stamp and pierce mat, lay that face down, and I'm going to take um, a ball ended embossing tool. I know I've got another one somewhere. I think I've probably popped it back in my scoreboard. But I'm going to take the ball ended tool from my take your pick tool. Let's pop that in where it should be. And I'm going to run round the edges. It feels a bit first time you do this it just feels all a bit imprecise but actually just go with it try and get it as close to the outside as you can and what that does I'm going to just try and stand up I'm just hoping that the camera can pick that up can you see how that's made that look a bit like a pillow it's just given a bit of depth to that sentiment it's just something a bit different so it's another little tiny technique i'm just going to pop that back in there out of the way okay so that's my sentiment done so i've got my components gathered now so i'm now going to go into the gilded leafing flakes so i'm going to bring in my box of gilded leafing flakes that we always open really carefully because we know that they go everywhere the slightest breath we have to start whispering when we open the box because they want to jump out and stick to you and you end up being like goldfinger i'm going to bring back in my layer that i put my glue on so that's nice and tacky now and i'm going to use the lid because it's a handy size just as a container and i'm going to pull out some of these flakes now some of them if you're lucky Ooh, they're lovely and big. Look at that. Gosh, that's almost as big as a Kit Kat wrapper. That's marvellous. I'm going to just start laying them down over that tacky glue. You can smoosh them down like this. You don't have to lay them down precisely, but it's quite handy when they come out in a big chunk. Oh, look, there's another one. You were hiding at the bottom of the pot, big flake. And this is a really simple, very easy technique. So wherever you have tacky glue, so wherever you've put down wet glue and leave it to go tacky, you can then stick your gilding flakes too. And as I start to burnish with a finger, you need to have a nice clean pair of hands, clean finger, and you start burnishing it and rubbing it. And hopefully you can start to see that brick image. You can really put some pressure on with your fingers. Mm, it's like magic. Really good burnish with your finger. And you can start to see now we've got that lovely brick design. Shake off the excess. It's very static as well. I ended up with gold tips to my fingernails the other day because I had glue all over them, but it just it just wash off. It's it's just very static. So you need a bit of patience. I do try and get as much back in the pot, but to be honest, it's of a fruitless exercise as long as it's contained within the box i'm not bothered now i'm going to take one of my this is just a stiff bristled um glue brush in fact there's too much in there so i'm going to use this worked up and i'm going to use it sort of straight down and give it a final sort of scratch over with that stiff brush and that'll just take any little bits off you can see it's almost coming off like glitter now and that's where if I just shake that off 
throw my brush back in, get some of these big bits maybe and pop them back in. But to be fair, you get so much in that pot. I'm not precious about every tiny little scrap being put back in. It's just more for the fact that it sticks to everything else. So now I've got hands full of gold, which I'm going to, not got my pinny on, so I'm going to wipe it on my leggings. And I will just bring back in um, my sticky cloth, if I can find it. Do you know, I put things down right next to me and they disappear immediately. Does that happen to you in your craft room? Who loses things? Oh, I know, Alison loses things. We won't mention the hello stamp. Don't mention the hello stamp. Sorry, Alison, I think I mentioned it. It will turn up. I have every faith that Alison's hello stamp will turn up like my mum's Christmas tree stamp. So I've just used the sticky cloth and I can just shake that over my bin or I can just fold it over. I'll give that a little bit of a wipe and that'll just take off those glittery bits. I'm so glad I remembered that I had this tucked at the back of a drawer. So now we've got our lovely um, layer. We can now go ahead and start decorating our card. So even though it's a technique card, it's not taken that long to do. I'm just going to burnish that, that um, crease and I'm just going to stick that down. We could even add additional background if we wanted to. We could add some splatters because we've roughed the surface with that um, sanding block. This I found that this um, speciality paper is too shiny to just accept wet ink straight away. It is better with the um, alcohol ink, but if you rough the surface, then it will take some. And of course, it will take stays on. Oh, and this is actually, I'm just thinking about it, this is the first time I've used Tombow wet glue to the back of it. And as it's a non-porous surface, I'm wondering how that's going to behave. Because for my original card, I used a tape runner glue. So let's just pop that down. It feels like it's sticking nicely. So that's great. That's our, our layer. Beautiful bright pink card. And we're going to put our butterfly over here. So I'm going to just have those wings sticking. So I will just adhere my butterfly right in the middle. But I want to pop some of these elements behind. And I'm going to bring those in. I've actually chosen some and just pop them to one side in a little pot. But these are from the Dandy Laser Cut Paper. And I will just show you them in the January to June catalogue because the, the picture in the catalogue is absolutely appalling. I'm so sorry, but whoever photographed this, it's part of the Dandy Garden Suite. And this is the picture of the laser cut paper. Yes, absolutely appalling. You can't see any of the detail whatsoever. It's rubbish. And I was looking for ages. What What is this, this laser cut here? And then I was looking at this card. Where is this piece from? And this, and it took me forever to determine that it was actually from these. So, sorry. January to June mini catalogue, page 25. Dandy laser cut paper is £10.75. You get some beautiful images. I'm going to just bring some of them out because I've got a piece of dark coloured cardstock so that they should, they should show up nicely. And I'll just show you them quickly. Look, you get these laser cut pieces. They are pretty. And there's the one with the seed heads. Yeah, they are pretty. And the one with dragonflies on. And then a plain one with a edge. And then some of these circles. So they are nice. And you get some um, dragonfly shapes and some plain labels and then some leaves. And these pieces that I'm going to use now. So that was just a very quick look at them. And I, the reason I wanted to show you them like that was just because of that appalling photo in the catalogue. Sorry, photographer, but not a good job. That was not a good job day. So I'm going to use these little elements just to give it a bit of extra background. And actually, one thing I'm going to do with this butterfly, I'm feeling that this white edge of the butterfly is a bit stark. So I'm going to take my blend blending brush before I actually stick it on. I'm going to take my Magenta Madness ink 
and I'm going to just quickly, gosh, I'm into creasing things this evening, just quickly go over the edges and just take away that stark white border. For me, it just looks a little bit better because I'm trying to go for a bit more of a distressed and vintagey background. So I did exactly the same with just jade ink on this image here. Ooh, I don't know whether the heating's turned up, but I'm really warm. Oh, how are you all doing? Are you flagging? So I'm going to just assemble the card now. I don't really need to say too much about it. I've taken these three elements from the laser cut paper. I'm going to just arrange them in some kind of way in the background. Just decide whether I'm happy with that and pop my butterfly over the top. So I feel quite happy with that arrangement. And I'm going to use some stamping seal. Happy with where they are. I'm going to just slide them up a bit in one go. Pop some stamping seal where I want them. Quite straightforward. And then sort of slide them back into position a bit. Like that. Need a little bit more, we'll see how we get on with that. Has that been touched? Yeah, I think that's firmly anchored. So I'm happy with that position. I'm going to pop my butterfly up using a dimensional foam pad. I've got some scraps here. I'm trying to keep my scraps of dimensionals just right in front of me instead of with my with the rest of them on my desk so that I make sure I use up my scraps because I end up with a big pile big pile of these and then I'm always looking for a full dimensional foam pad so I'm going to stick my butterfly there I can just see the tail end of one of those laser cut pieces i'm just going to snip that off and tidy that up you might not have seen that on camera but i could just see it protruding the bottom of that butterfly and i'm going to pop my sentiment on i don't want to cover too much of my gold up but i think that should be the, absolutely fine if it's in the same position i'm going to use up some of this scrap look a piece like that's perfect just goes behind and we'll pop that i will just tuck it slightly under one of the things I always like to do when I'm pulling my elements together is not have too much space between. I like to group them so that they're kind of touching. And that way your eye will just look at the whole of this and not be thinking, oh, sentiment, element, element. Oh, and what's that going on in the background? The background now speaks for itself. Now, I did finish off my original card with some um in that gold enamel dots but i'm not sure if i've run out of those so let's have a look in my bling box let's see what i've got i can use what i could go for actually thinking about it is i could go for some pearls um the gold enamel dots were really small and they just added another bit of texture but what I could do is go for some pearls and colour them with magenta madness now look I've got this box of per this packet of pearls with all these odd bits left over all the different odd sizes left some have been coloured some have been neglected so I'm just going to use some of those up now let's have a look have I got oh that's melon mambo have I got magenta madness I might not have that's so if i use dark melon mambo this is the beauty of stamping up colors will we get away with it so if i color a big pearl so our stamping blends the alcohol markers fantastic for coloring your gems and your jewels because that color if you just give it a moment to dry that color will um will stay there actually quite liking that size though it's already colored some sort of pinky red color so let's go for one of each size let's see if we've got away with that color let's have a look at you 
and pop one there. I think we might have got away with that. It's one of the wonderful things about stamping up colours. They complement each other really well. Particularly if it's something like a really small element, like a pearl. You can get away with it. I think I'll have two together there. I do like to be a bit random. I'm not a pearl in each corner type of person. And you might be, and that's perfectly fine. There is nothing wrong with that whatsoever. We are all individuals. We all like our own style of things. It would not do to all be the same. We like to be same, but different. So that's my card, same but different. And um, that's my technique. So that's my tip for use, another use for the gilded leafing flakes, which I hope you've enjoyed. Um, just to say that you don't need to have the stamp and stick um, powder and a heat gun to use the gilded leafing flakes. I've now shown you two or three or four different ways of using it. So if you didn't catch those, you can look back at my videos that are all saved on Facebook and YouTube. Now, um, I was thinking about showing you another card, but I haven't got anything prepared. But I do have a project in mind. Who's still there? Oh, gosh, have I knocked this camera? Have you been watching me all wonky all evening? I'm so sorry about that. I don't know. I didn't even feel that knocked it. Okay. Yes, Alison, that's a good point. Any of your gemstones, that um, alcohol marker does work on your rhinestones. Let me just hold that up so you can see it. If We're not pixely now. You can see that lovely gilded and it does it's not going to come off it is stuck down that's a lovely technique to use now i've got one more little project that i could make for you when i was having a rummage in the cupboard earlier i found this small box frame and i thought oh that would look quite nice with a butterfly in wouldn't it so let's do something we've got this gorgeous designer series paper and you know me and my home decor pieces i do love to make a home decor piece so i'm going to just have a quick play because we've not quite been on an hour and i've achieved what i wanted to achieve but you know more for good value aren't i let me just see if i can get that out of there why is it not coming out there we go now this frame's been in my cupboard a while so let's have a I'll just give it a quick wipe with a cloth. It's just one of those small, deep box frames. And I think this one was from Wilco's. Pretty sure it was from Wilco's. And it gives you the size. So it's 4 inch by 4 inch or 10.6 by 10.6 centimetres. So I'm going to grab some of this pretty DSP. And I know exactly which one I want. But first of all, I'm going to check which butterfly would fit inside best so let me just pop that there so I'm just going to eyeball this and see which one would look best blue one I think the blue one what do you reckon folks blue one the little orange one looks a little bit tiddly doesn't it unless I put two in could we squeeze so shall we go for a two for one or a one on its own I'll let you make that choice I'll wait for a comment to come up while I just pick some of this DSP out of here. So it's either that one or that one. The blue one on its own. Sylvia, you are like Mrs. Fast Typist. Sorry, Ali, but Sylvia got in there. She's got fast fingers. She's like quick draw McGraw. She got in there. So she wants the blue one. We'll have the blue one on the orange background I think let's go for it let's use some of this designer series paper that's what it's there for and does the blue one look good on the blue background does it stand out enough <gasps> now blue on the blue background <laughs> one but the screen's blurred I was still I we still got a blurred screen I'm really sorry about that I don't know what is happening with my screen so I think I'll just really quickly finish this project. I think I'm going to go for that blue one on the blue background, actually. I prefer that. So let's quickly do a very quick home decor project. So it did say 10 point... What did it say? What did it say? <laughs> oh, overall size. Insert size 7.6 by 7.6. 
let's go for it. 7.6, 7.6, and that's our insert. Yes, like that. And all we need to do is take our butterfly, and it's not going to be flat, is it? Because butterflies are not flat. So they're going, his wings are going to be slightly up. So I'm putting my thumbnail at the side of the body. Like this. So I know where the body is when I turn it over. I'm going to get my stamp and pierce mat. And I'm going to get my ball ended tool back out. And I'm going to run a groove down where that body is. And that should give that body a 3D effect. And I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm going to slightly curl those wings so that they're curled around. But then I'm going to just bend them up a bit. And I'm going to get a piece of my scrap. Ooh, where's my snip's gone? Just going to get a piece of my scrap. that piece behind. I'm going to mount that right in the middle of that piece of designer series paper. And because it's a box frame, it should look pretty good inside the box. I'm not even going to stick it on anything, I'm just going to drop that in there. Let's just drop that in there. So why did they give me a measurement if the measurement's not correct? Feels like a tight fit. Oh yes, it's a tight fit. So let's just pop that in there. And close the box. And then we've got a pretty piece of home decor. And you can see that it's standing out 3D because it's a deep box frame. Now I could do extra with that. I could do some blending underneath, do some extra bits. I could do some stamping around the frame. Um, stamping a sentiment on the frame would look really pretty as well but hope that that just shows you how quickly you can make a very pretty quick and easy piece of home decor and if you enjoy giving gifts that's something really quick and easy that you can do using our gorgeous designer series paper so something a bit different very very gorgeous cards though I say so myself and you will see social media will be filled with these beautiful cards using these stunning butterflies at the moment but also equally pretty little piece of home decor so i hope you've enjoyed the project so i'm going to spin my camera back round, but i'm feeling rather hot so i think i'm probably a bit pink a bit magenta madness maybe let's have a look let's see if i can get you Round without the camera falling out. Hello, am I a bit magenta madness? <laughs> I feel very hot and bothered this evening. I'm just going to have a drink. Mm. And I don't know why it is. I think the heating must be on full blast. But thank you very much for watching, everyone. And um, I hope you've enjoyed the project. So a quick reminder, the products that I've used this evening are from the Butterfly Brilliance um, new products that will be available to you customers next Tuesday so if you're interested in placing an order for any of them because you can't wait until the new catalogue is out and you've just got to have them all now and in particular if you absolutely fell in love with the designer series paper the only time you'll be able to get it is before from next Tuesday until before the annual catalogue goes live don't miss out if you've fallen in love with that um, please let me know, just get in touch. You know how to order direct. If you want to go to my shop, you just press shop now, whether you're watching me on YouTube or on Facebook, and it will take you direct. If you're local to me and you want to save on postage and packing, just let me know and I will add you to my next order. So talking about next orders, uh, celebration ends on Sunday and I am placing a joint customer order for local customers for local delivery. Um, this weekend. I would like to get local orders in by Friday of this week so that I know where I am as I've got lots of things to do over the weekend and I'd really like to get that order onto the system and then I can press go 
um, before celebration ends. So it's your last chance to earn freebies um, with celebration. So do let me know, please get in touch if you haven't done so already. Um, so that's that. What else do I need to tell you? I think that's a quick roundup of everything that I needed to tell you. I'm talking fast. If you didn't understand anything, drop me a message or drop me a comment just below and I will answer. I'll keep my eyes on the comments um, for the next couple of days, certainly. So just drop me a comment or a direct message. You know, to message me, I think there's also a button that says message me. So you can get in touch that way and local orders will be delivered just as soon as they're here. And that's everything I needed to tell you. <laughs> just thank you so much. And I just want to finish off by saying a massive thank you to all of my customers, regular and new customers who've just joined me this year. During celebration, you've kept the faith. We had some awful, awful issues in January with shipping and terrible delays in getting products here. And I just want to say a massive heartfelt thank you to you all for keeping the faith, staying with me. And um, yeah, we've, we've got there. We've got to the end of celebration. Everything is back to normal now and shipping is happening um, just back as it should be. So a massive thank you for, for staying with me and placing your orders and still believing in stamping up. And that's all for this evening. So stay safe, stay happy, stay crafting. It's the safest thing to do. And um, yeah, stay happy. Keep crafting, everyone. Thanks for joining me. Lots of love. Bye for now. Bye.